Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, I'll be showcasing how to securely host a website using AWS S3 but with a private bucket. By the end of this video, you'll be equipped to leverage the power of CloudFront for a secure and efficient static website without compromising on privacy. So let's get started. Alright, let's dive into the project architecture for hosting our website under both a root domain and a subdomain. We'll actually be using two S3 buckets for this setup. One for your subdomain. This bucket will hold all the actual website files. And the other one for your root domain. This bucket will act as a middleman. It will be empty, but we'll configure it to redirect all traffic to the subdomain bucket. To optimize performance and delivery, we'll set up two CloudFront distributions, one for root S3 bucket and one for subdomain S3 bucket. Finally, we'll configure Route 53 to route all traffic for both the root domain and subdomain to their respective CloudFront distributions. You'll need a domain name. You can purchase one from AWS Route 53 or any other domain registrar. You'll also need an SSL certificate for your domain. In this guide, I will be using Route 53 to obtain one. Alright, next step is securing our website with an SSL certificate. I'll be requesting a wildcard certificate for my domain name. The first step is to enter my fully qualified domain name. Then, I'll specify that I want a wildcard certificate to secure all subdomains under this domain as well. Once we have the wildcard certificate, we need to configure our domain to use it. We'll do this by creating a hosted zone for our domain name in AWS Route 53. Now that Route 53 has finished setting up the hosted zone, we can now create the C name records needed for our SSL certificate. We'll do this conveniently within the AWS Certificate Manager console. Alright, now we need to configure your domain name to point to your website hosted on AWS. If you purchased your domain name from a provider like Hostinger, you'll need to update the name servers within their domain management console. This essentially tells the internet where to find your website. However, if you purchased your domain name directly through AWS Route 53, you can skip this step entirely. Now, let's create a new S3 bucket on AWS. We'll name it according to our subdomain. We'll stick with the default settings for this bucket for now, but we will change access permissions and other configurations later in this video. Perfect. We've got the S3 bucket set up for our subdomain. Now, to handle the root domain as well, let's create another S3 bucket. We'll name it after our root domain. We'll stick with the default settings. It's time to upload our website content to the subdomain S3 bucket. I already have a simple website which I created using Gatsby.js. We'll upload all the generated static files to the subdomain S3 bucket.
All right, we've uploaded the website files, but there's one more step to make it accessible under both the root domain and subdomain. We'll configure the root domain S3 bucket for static website hosting with a redirect. This essentially tells anyone visiting the root domain to be automatically sent to the subdomain where the website resides. Now, if you try to access your website directly by entering the bucket website endpoint, it will automatically redirect you to the subdomain which we added previously. Next step. We'll create a CloudFront distribution specifically for our subdomain. For the origin, we'll point it to the subdomain S3 bucket where the website files reside. Since we haven't enabled static website hosting there, we'll need to use the bucket's REST API endpoint as the source. There's one more security step to consider for our CloudFront distribution. Since we're not using static website hosting on the subdomain S3 bucket, CloudFront won't have direct access to the website files. To address this, we'll create a special identity called an origin access identity. Think of it as a secure key that grants CloudFront permission to access the files in the S3 bucket. We'll then update the S3 bucket policy to acknowledge this OAI, ensuring a secure connection. Now, to ensure a secure connection for your website visitors, we'll configure the CloudFront distribution to redirect all HTTP traffic to HTTPS. This can be done easily within the viewer protocol policy settings. Since this is a test website, we can skip enabling the web application firewall. We can also choose a more targeted selection of edge locations instead of including them all. As an important step, under the alternate domain name section, I'll add my subdomain. This ensures CloudFront recognizes the specific domain name visitors will use to access your website. Then, we'll select the SSL certificate we previously requested. This will activate HTTPS encryption for your website. Finally, we'll give the default root object as index.html. Now, let's create another distribution specifically for the root domain. Here's the key difference, since we enabled static website hosting for the root domain S3 bucket, we can simply use its website endpoint as the origin for CloudFront. This eliminates the need for an origin access identity in this case. For the alternate domain name section, we'll use our actual root domain name. The rest of the configuration can be similar to the subdomain distribution. The final step is to configure our Route 53 hosted zone to point visitors to our website. We'll do this by creating alias records for each of the CloudFront distributions we just created. Now you try accessing your website using both the subdomain and root domain in your web browser. You should be seamlessly redirected to the website content hosted on the subdomain S3 bucket. It seems like we might be hitting a snag when trying to access pages beyond the homepage. Let's investigate this together. Since we set up the CloudFront distribution for the subdomain using the REST API endpoint, it might not serve nested index.html files properly. This is because the REST API endpoint treats everything as an object, not a website directory structure.
Now we try to host a single page application which I created using React.js. Unlike traditional websites with separate pages, single page applications use clever client-side JavaScript to handle navigation. First, we'll simply empty the contents of the subdomain S3 bucket. This ensures a clean slate for your website files. Then, in one efficient step, we'll upload all the static files generated by your React application build process. You might encounter a slight hiccup when accessing your updated React application. Remember that CloudFront caches static content to deliver your website faster to visitors around the world. This is great for performance, but it can sometimes mean you don't see the latest updates immediately. Don't worry, there are ways to fix this. To ensure you see the latest updates to your React application, we need to invalidate the cached content in CloudFront. The most efficient way to achieve this is by creating an invalidation for all paths. This will tell CloudFront to discard all cached files associated with your website, guaranteeing you see the fresh React application content. Now your React application is shining brightly on both the subdomain and root domain. The application routing is also functioning perfectly, ensuring a seamless user experience for your visitors. Alright everyone, that's all I have for today. I hope you found this video helpful in the context of cloud computing. See you next time with another exciting topic. Leave a comment below with any questions you have. Don't forget to subscribe for more exciting tutorials. I've also included a link in the description below to a detailed article about this topic.